Streaming now from Cron 4, the Bay Area's local news station. Happening right now, San Francisco Mayor London Breed is about to announce a new vaccination requirement for the city. So let's listen in live. Or shows proof of vaccination. And so I felt a little bit safer when I was there last night. And today's announcement is really about making sure that people feel a little bit safer in our city. But more importantly, what we're seeing now with this virus is very challenging and of great concern to me and I know many of you as well. But let's take it back just a little bit. The fact is that we should be proud as San Franciscans. When I asked you all over a year ago to shelter in place and to just basically change your entire lives to support one another and to ensure that this virus didn't spread, you all, many San Franciscans and people throughout the Bay Area, you answered the call, you stepped up, you did your part. Our health care workers showed up to the hospitals to take care of those who unfortunately contracted the virus and landed in the hospital. But ultimately, we saw the very best of the people of this city. And now we need just a little bit more. And again, going back to where we are, we've seen in this city, 78% of people in San Francisco have been fully vaccinated. That is still more than any place else in the country. And I know the rest of you all are coming kicking and screaming, but let me explain why this is so important. It's important because kids under the age of 12 cannot be vaccinated. So we have to make sure that we're protecting them. It's important because there are still people who are elderly and sick and those with underlying health conditions that may not even be eligible for the vaccine. We're doing this for them. So the reason why we're here today is because we're actually following the lead of small businesses and in particular many VARs in San Francisco that decided on their own, we're gonna require proof of vaccination before you enter our bar. And the reason why we're here at Vericio is because the owner, wherever she is, somewhere, there you go, Janet, Janet Clyde, she took it the extra step. She took a lot of heat for it. She said, I wanna keep my customers and my employees safe. So I'm going to do this despite how challenging it was, how it impacted her business, because she put the health and safety of the people of this city and her customers and her employees before anything else. That's what being a good San Franciscan is all about. And so we appreciate you letting us be here at this historic location to recognize that we really are in this together. And because this Delta variant has been so brutal, I don't know about you, but when the virus first happened and over that time period, less pe I knew less people at that time who actually got the virus. And there are a bunch of folks that I know now who have in some cases been vaccinated that have contracted COVID because the Delta variants is just that more contagious. And we are not out of the woods as it relates to COVID. We're still going through it. Yes, we're sick and tired of it, but it's not sick and tired of us. It is still coming back with a vengeance. We're seeing 263 new cases every day. We have at least 107 people right now that are in the hospital. And those people are actually younger in some cases than what previously existed. And Dr. Colfax will tell you that people are like, well, you know, if I'm going to get COVID anyway, and I, I, why should I get vaccinated? Well, it's the difference between being home for a couple of days and having sniffles, right, Dr. Colfax? or being in the hospital on a respirator where you can't breathe. That's the difference, and this is real. 
And I know it's hard to just really understand sometimes when you don't completely see it. But those folks who are working in those hospitals every day where their loved ones can't even come to visit them, where in some cases they can't talk, where in this past year and a half, there have been people who have died who've not even been able to have funerals. When we think about those sorts of things, how can we not do our part to do better, to get vaccinated, to make sure we're protecting one another, to make sure we're protecting our children because they can't get vaccinated? So why are we here today? Well, part of it is we're taking our steps around vaccinations just a little bit further. And starting August 20th, you will need proof of vaccination in businesses um, for your customers in high contact areas like bars, restaurants, clubs, theaters, entertainment venues, indoor gyms and fitness, and large indoor events with more than a thousand people. By October 13th, employees at these establishments must be vaccinated as well. So all of the employees need to show proof of vaccination by October 13th to their employer. Now, to be clear, this will not include people or kids who are under the age of 12 because they can't get vaccinated. So what we don't want folks to think is a family of four with two kids that are six or seven years old that you can't go to a restaurant. You can because we know that your children cannot be vaccinated and will not have the ability to show proof, but the parents will need to. And this does not impact those who are coming to pick up to go orders. So we know there's a lot of folks who get deliveries and folks who do to-go orders and want to eat at home. So this won't impact that. And as I said, why are we doing this? It's to protect the workers. It's to protect kids. It's to protect those who can't get vaccinated. It's to make sure that we don't go backwards. It's to make sure that I never have to get up in front of you and say, I'm sorry, I know we just reopened and now the city's closed again because we are seeing too many people die. So to find out information about getting vaccinated, go to sf.gov slash get vaccinated. Uh, and the details of the new vaccination requirement is at sf.gov slash vax required. You can always call 311 if you have any questions or uh, need any additional information. Um, but this is an important step towards our recovery. Uh, I saw on the news Hamilton just opened and people were there with smiles in their faces. Underneath the mask, I saw the high cheekbones. I'm, I know you guys know what that looks like. And it felt good. There was someone who was in tears being able to see a live performance. I don't know about you, but when I went out to Asia SF, and the women who perform there, like to be able to be that up close for a performance, to be out in the city, to go to a restaurant, to see people again. There was a time we could not do this. So if we want to continue down this path, if we want to continue to open, to make sure that people are healthy, to make sure we're protected, to make sure that we're in a good place as a city, from a public health perspective so that our economy can really recover to, it, to its fullest extent, then we all have to do our part. We need to get vaccinated. We need to make sure that we are respectful to the businesses that ask us to put on our mask or to produce your vaccination card. We need to continue to have grace as we deal with one of the most challenging times of our lives, something none of us ever expected. And yes, I know it's been an inconvenience, but think about those people who have died and count your blessings that it is not you because you're standing right here. And let's make sure that it isn't you in the future. And let's make sure that it isn't anyone else in the future because that's what this is about, making sure 
that now that we have a vaccine, which we didn't anticipate at this time in such a rapid turnaround, that we take full advantage of it because that's going to make the difference for us. And I want to thank uh, a couple of folks here joining us, including Rodney Fong from the San Francisco Chamber. Thank you for being here. Uh, Sharky Laguana from the Small Business Commission. Thank you so much for your work and advocacy, uh, as well as I think Lori Thomas is here from the Golden Gate Restaurant Association. Thank you. Um, and we have a couple of other folks joining us. I think Ben Blyman is going to say a few words representing the, the bar owners here today. Um, you know, it's, it was not, I mean, Asia SF is somewhat like a bar. It's, it's a bar, performance, food, they have it all. So it's like the perfect bar space where you get, get everything. Anyway, Ben is here to talk a little bit about that. Uh, Mary Ellen Carroll is here from the Department of Emergency Management to uh, answer any questions. Uh, and I think, uh, um, who else is here? Like I said, it was a long night. Um, and, and right now I'm going to call up Dr. Grant Koufax to uh, talk a little bit about the specifics of our health order, what the plans are, um, and just thank you all so much for being here, and thank you all so much for continuing to do your very best to comply uh, with these very uh, complicated, sometimes numerous health orders, uh, but they will keep us safe and they will save lives. Thank you so much. Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you, Mayor Breed, for your steadfast leadership as we continue to navigate responding to COVID-19 as a city. And thank you, Janet and Vesuvio, for your important efforts to bring us towards recovery from this pandemic. And I want to thank uh, Dr. Navina Baba, our uh, acting health officer who worked very hard on, on these orders, and of course, for Director Mary Ellen Carroll for your ongoing partnership in this response. The business community has been an important partner in our efforts ever since the early days of the pandemic, which is now well over a year and a half. From capacity limits to masking requirements to everything in between, you have responded and adapted to the many new ways of doing business throughout. And for that, we thank you. I look out at all the new outdoor dining spots and walk up these days and I'm so pleased to see the way San Francisco has adapted and come back to life. Even in just the last few months, the difference is palpable. Our ability to adapt, change and respond will serve us well because even as we beat back this disease, we also know that COVID-19 will be with us in some capacity for the foreseeable future. We are now in a new phase of the pandemic and even as we see a surge of cases, we have the powerful tool to fight this disease and to keep ourselves and each other safe. The vaccines, let's use them. The updates to our Safer Return Together Health Order are designed to make sure that we can continue to keep businesses open and enjoy our lives in San Francisco safely, even as we face the Delta variant and potentially other variants to come. We know that the main ways this virus spread is through high contact indoor settings where people are at close range. It also spreads easily where people are breathing heavily indoors. It's simply common sense. It makes sense to require proof of vaccination in indoor settings where food and drink is served like restaurants and bars and where aerobic exercise is happening like gyms and fitness establishments. And where many people gather, like at indoor venues of a thousand people or more. We believe we will continue to make a major difference in lowering the spread of COVID-19 with a common sense solution of vaccines. The vaccines continue to work remarkably well, especially in dramatically lowering the risk of hospitalization and death from COVID-19. The vaccines are our armor. They are our life jackets, they are our parachutes. They are our way out of this pandemic. For anyone wondering how they will comply with the proof of vaccination requirement, the good news is that we have made the vaccine exceedingly easy to get. For instance, 
DPH launched a Vax to You campaign last week that will literally bring a mobile vaccination team to your home or business if you have at least five people ready to get the vaccine. We ask businesses to please take advantage of that. And you can go to sf.gov slash vax to you for more information. And of course, I want to emphasize, you can continue to get the vaccine from your health care provider or at a pharmacy or at our many drop-in sites across the city. We are also ready and on hand to make sure businesses have all the tools, signage, and support needed to implement the new vaccine requirements. While today's announcement applies to these specific kinds of businesses, we also encourage all businesses in the city to do their part and require their employees and patrons to get vaccinated as soon as possible. For anyone who is on the fence about getting vaccinated or hasn't made the time, we very much hope that the incentive of eating at your favorite restaurant in San Francisco or grabbing a drink will remove any barriers that you may have to getting vaccinated. The vaccine is safe, effective, and appointments are, are readily available. And just a reminder that even if you've already had COVID-19, we in the CDC strongly recommend that you get fully vaccinated. Thank you. And with that, I'd like to in introduce Ben Blyman, head of the San Francisco Bar Owners Alliance and an early leader in requiring vaccinations at bars and encouraging others to join. Ben, thank you. Thank you. Um, first of all, I'd like to say happy birthday to Mayor Breed. Happy birthday. <laughs> um, second of all, I just want to thank Mayor Breed for her leadership uh, throughout the pandemic. Uh, this has been a really, really tough time for small businesses. For many of us, it's the worst year and a half of our professional lives. And I can't say how grateful we are to have somebody in the highest leadership in San Francisco who actually cares about us and doesn't just help us when it's politically expedient to do so. Um, time and time again, the mayor has shown that she truly cares about our issues and is willing to go to the mat for us over and over again. So thank you very much for that. I just want to call that out. Um, about three to four weeks ago, uh, the San Francisco bar owners started to notice uh, alarming cases of breakthrough infections with staff members of ours. Um, these are vaccinated individuals working in bars who suddenly were coming down with COVID. Thankfully, none of the cases were very serious. There were no hospitalizations, but it was enough to give us pause and to have a robust conversation. Um, in that conversation, three things came up that I noticed, and it was a very robust conversation. Um, one was how scared we were for the health of our staff members. Uh, specifically, uh, we have a lot of staff members who have young children. We have a lot of staff members who take care of elderly parents. And the idea that they could bring something home that could put them in danger was very scary for us and very real. Um, we have a sacred obligation to our staff members. We, we know that. We feel that way. And that was really, really first and foremost in our minds. The second was the impact it was having on our businesses. Um, if somebody comes down with COVID, even if they don't go to the hospital, um, they're out for at least 10 days, often more. And we're having a staffing shortage already in across the U.S. So this has a serious impacts on our ability to do business. I myself had to close a bar for a night because my bartender got COVID at a different job of his and we were unable to find coverage. So we were, we were having a real world impact on us. Um, and the third thing that really came up was the frustration that we felt as a community. Um, for the first year of the pandemic, we were fighting an uncontrollable virus. It could be sort of managed, but it was kind of out of control. And we kind of had this sense of fatalism, but that was no longer the case. This is controllable now. And the bar owners were very vociferous in their feelings about individuals who can get vaccinated and are not. And the frustration was palpable. Uh, these people were messing up our livelihoods. They were putting everybody else in danger. And it was something that came up and we floated the idea, what if we just don't let them inside? Um, after a poll we did, over 80% of our, of our membership responded that they would like to go through with that. And we declared that we would be only allow uh, vaccinated individuals to hang out indoor at our establishments. 
It made a lot of news, uh, but in actual practice, it actually was a little bit of a nothing burger. Um, if anything, almost every single person who walked through our doors that we're hearing about was happy about it. They were thrilled. They were thankful. They felt safer. Um, the only pushback we got was mostly online from a bunch of remarkably moronic right-wing trolls whose uh, trolling was so bad, I could, I could hopefully teach them a little bit about how to troll correctly. That said... Um, we've gone through with it. It works. It's helping to decrease the exposure for our staff members and their families and help our businesses. Um, we know that unvaccinated individuals are eight times more likely to contract and spread coronavirus. And we need to make sure that we keep them from exposing our staffs and their families as much as we can. Even though there wasn't much pushback, we still kind of felt like we were on an island as a group. Um, we didn't do it thinking other people would follow. We didn't do it to change hearts and minds. If hearts and minds do change, that's fantastic. But we did it just to protect our staff and their families and try to help our businesses. Um, but the fact that San Francisco is doing this now is a huge, huge thing for us. We're not alone anymore. The city is making a bold statement. If you want to participate in our society fully, if you want to be able to cough into the mouths of other people around you in close, tight areas, you must be vaccinated <laughs> indoors if you're going to do that. The the fact that we're not alone is a huge, huge, huge benefit to us, and I thank the city of San Francisco for going through with this. It's a giant deal for us, so thank you very much. Um, thanks for having us. Thank you, Ben, and thank you to all the bar owners in San Francisco. Um, thank you to Vesuvio and Janet in particular uh, for your leadership and your work and advocacy, and as I said, the bars did this a couple of weeks ago, and the city is following their lead, which I think is, is truly remarkable. Um, the example that they're setting and what we're doing to keep people safe uh, is, is most important at this time. Uh, and with that, uh, I'll open it up to questions from the press. So I think the goal for us is not to be... Um, heavy-handed with the enforcement. In many cases, based on our outreach and conversations with businesses, uh, for the most part, people welcome this. Many of the businesses welcome this. So we're leaving this in the hands of our small business, businesses, but we do have members of the Department of Public Health um, that are out and, and members from the San Francisco Police Department, you know, dealing with compliance related issues. But the goal is to not cite people or to find people or what have you, is to just make sure that people are in compliance and, and to ask them to agree and, and to work with them to determine how we can get them in compliance if they're having trouble. But I think for the most part, we're going we're gonna to trust the, the businesses of San Francisco uh, to do their part, to ask for vaccinations. And if we see that things are out of control with the numbers or other issues, then we'll, we'll take it a, a step further. But I don't think we're going to need to because I, I do think that this is something that many, um, I, I saw the news the other day, a lot of restaurants were requiring vaccination cards for indoor and outdoor. Um, and so we're just saying, look, indoor. We're, we're not requiring it for outdoor, but we know that there are a lot of folks who want to protect their employees and have serious concerns. So I, I think this is going to be welcome, and I don't think we're going to need to be heavy-handed with our approach. Are there going to be so we've given options. So you can have a photo of your vaccination card. You can actually have your physical vaccination card. Uh, you can also register with the state, and there is a way to provide proof in that way. So we're not trying to be unreasonable. Um, because I, I carry a picture of mine on my phone just so and, and just, you know, make sure you get the word out. I am vaccinated so that in some cases, if I forget to, you know how you can't scroll and find the picture. Sometimes it takes me longer to pull up my vaccination card. But I said, look at the news. I'm vaccinated. <laughs> um, but but the goal is to make it as easy as possible for people to provide proof. What's your response to the sheriff? Well, I, I would say that, look, I get that there are some people that are concerned. 
but I have a responsibility to the entire city and I have a responsibility to protect public health. So I think that if there are people who have underlying health conditions and, 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 and they can work this out with the doctors uh, and, and with their HR departments, it, it would make sense. Um, you know, I know there are some people who have religious beliefs as well, and that's a whole conversation that has to t be taken place with HR. Um, but from my perspective, as much as I appreciate our city workforce and all that they do for San Francisco, especially during the time when COVID existed, to have an employment opportunity with the city is an absolute privilege. And I think that when we're asking people to, to do something like this, it is not completely unreasonable because we don't make a lot of requests of this nature. Um, but this is a once in a century pandemic and we have to take it a step further. And unfortunately, um, there are a number of employees who feel a certain uh, way about vaccinations and we're trying to do our very best to uh, make sure we're communicating with one another and providing the facts and working together. But ultimately, I have a job to do for the people of San Francisco and I'm not going to deviate from that. I'm sorry, what was the question? The Department of Public Health cert team? No, it's a different I, I can't remember. Yeah, let Mary Ellen answer. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So the question was about the cert team um, that went out and did education. So we will have um, a smaller component of that to, to go out to support. It will not be the same numbers as before. Um, we're, we have to, the, you know, as you know, we've been, we've kind of been through this ro rodeo before in previous health orders. So we will have the websites the mayor talked about. The, the one that is going live today is sf.gov, uh, vax required, vax, vax required. Um, there'll be a toolkit. Um, the Office of Workforce Development is going to have webinars for businesses also. Um, and to the extent that we're able, we will have some teams going out, especially if we have areas where there's some difficulty, um, that will be a way. And again, our approach is not enforcement, it's education and support so everyone can come to compliance together. Yeah, so we'll still have the we'll we'll still have a way in which we can um, we can track down if there's issues with compliance. Um, Three one one is one of the places that you can go for that. Again, we will also have a um, as we've had in the past, which I think has been helpful, uh, FAQ page, and so as we have questions that come in or issues, we'll be able to address those on the FAQ. Mayor Green, um, is proof of vaccination going to be required for Giants games, and if not, why not? Uh, Dr. Colfax, you want to answer that? I'm sorry. For Giants games. For Giants? No, those are, those, the, the um, vaccine requirements that we're announcing today we are specifically to indoor, indoor events, indoor activities. Oh, why, why not? Why not? Well, because again, we know that the, tr the risk of transmission of the virus is so much higher indoor in crowded events. Um, and we want to uh, really focus on that. That's where we think uh, the, the major benefit of these vaccine mandates at this time will uh, be most likely to have an effect. So outdoor, outdoor events, outdoor dining, uh, outdoor crowds, uh, the vaccine, there's not a, a requirement in the health order. Obviously, we still encourage people to, to get vaccinated and to uh, uh, practice safe behaviors that we know slow the spread. Thank you. Uh, and I, I will add that for... Um, the mega events that are over 5,000 um, or over 10, is it 10,000, Dr. Colfax, for the mega events? You may want to talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I can. Yeah. Okay. So just to um, be clear, we're um, updating our guidance and recommendations with regard to uh, uh, the mega events uh, that have been over 5,000. This order for uh, indoor events applies to those mega events as well as um, uh, indoor events. Uh, met large events uh, indoors of, uh, that, that have people, a thousand or more people inside. So um, you can look at those, at those orders. Um, but again, the emphasis right now on these orders is on protecting people uh, in large crowds, indoors, people who are dining, going to bars, uh, at gyms or other establishments that serve uh, food and drink. Thank you. Mayor Reed, there's about 3,000 city employees that have 
as of this week reported that they haven't been vaccinated. If you would care in your office, if they continue to refuse to get vaccinated, will they be fired? <laughs> So what we've asked for currently from city employees as it relates to their requirement to be vaccinated is this is the first phase. We just want at this time for them to report whether or not they've been vaccinated. And so um, once we get through that process, then we plan to, with our various HR departments, reach out to each of those uh, persons individually um, to have a discussion and to put forth a plan of action. And the fact is everyone is talking about termination. Okay, I'm going to lose my job. But this is not about threatening the loss of a job. This is about a requirement that we expect people to comply with. And then we have the ability to take the appropriate action. Um, whether or not we will move towards the termination component is yet to be determined. A lot of what we have to do, however, is to make sure that people are still moving in the right direction as it relates to being vaccinated. There are some people that, of course, are not going to comply and we we have to make decisions accordingly but we can't say that you know we're going to start terminating people because they're not vaccinated but we do have that as an option but our goal is to not threaten is to not uh, be that aggressive with people it's to try and understand why and to get to a solution um, around those the, this difficult time because I know that people aren't just in some cases doing this to be difficult um, and I know that there are a lot of folks that do not want to lose their jobs so we got to just keep working at understanding but ultimately we're requiring it and we need to get to that point and we're going to have to take appropriate action depending on the decisions of any of those employees who are still refusing it once we get to that that timeline um, which I don't have off the top of my head. I think there uh, right now there isn't. Um, the goal is to try and see our numbers go down, our hospitalizations go down. We're saying, I mean, we're in the midst of a real surge. And when I say surge, um, it might feel different because we're not closing down like we did before. Um, but people are getting COVID at 263 people on average every single day are contracting COVID and we have 107 people in the hospital. So I think the data, which is what we use to guide our decisions, is what's going to help us determine what we do uh, in the future. But right now we don't have a specific end date. Um, and the more people that get vaccinated, the less likely that a lot of these health directives will continue. So um, you know, we're at 78% of San Franciscans that are fully vaccinated. That's absolutely incredible. Um, but kids under the age of 12 can't get vaccinated. Some people with underlying health conditions can't get vaccinated. So we still have a subset of the population that can't. And then we have a, a section of the population that is saying, no, I am not going to, right? Or I'm not going to because of religious belief. So we have to get to the bottom of that. We have to try and get as many people as we can vaccinated. If we had more people vaccinated in San Francisco, we wouldn't even be here implementing any additional directives. So that's just where it is is what it is and we're living in this pandemic and unfortunately we're going to have to continue to do our very best to get through this. Okay, thank you everyone. Uh, thank you. Carol and Dr. Colfax are available if you have further questions. Okay. Mayor Bigger, We were just listening in on a press conference with San Francisco Mayor London Breed and Dr. Grant Colfax and uh, a couple of other people, including a business owner here in San Francisco. Uh, according to their announcements, effective next Friday, San Francisco will require proof of vaccination for patrons and employees in a, in a number of indoor settings, including bars, restaurants, gyms, and large events. Employees of those establishments will have until October 13th to be fully vaccinated. And the new rule will not apply to children under 12 
2012 who are not eligible to be vaccinated. It will also not apply to pickups. Mayor Breed says as of now, 78% of San Francisco's eligible population is fully vaccinated. And while that is an impressive number, it also means 22% of the population is not vaccinated as the Delta variant continues to spread. When this mandate does go into effect next Friday, August 20th, San Francisco will become the first major U.S. city to require full vaccination for indoor businesses. New York City announced a similar mandate, but it only requires a proof of at least one shot of COVID-19 uh, for the vaccine of that. Uh, for now, you're watching Cron On. We'll have more news for you after the break.